What's the best movie of all time? Citizen Kane? Maybe something classic like The Wizard of Oz? Maybe some Hitchcock stuff like Psycho? I don't know. Wrong! It's Miami Connection. And I'm gonna show you why. Originally released in 1987, this gem totally failed at the box office and was completely forgotten for nearly 25 years. A man that worked at a cinema in Austin, Texas happened upon someone selling the original 35mm negative on eBay. He purchased it for a measly $35 and started screening it at his local theater. It became such a cult hit that he wanted to reach out to the creators about distribution. He called YK Kim, the original co-director, star, producer, and writer of the film. However, Kim was so embarrassed by the failure of Miami Connection that he shrugged the call off as a prank. Eventually, Kim would give in and agree to distribute the film. It's honestly a really cool redemption story. I've been trying to track down a copy since last year and I was finally able to get one when Vinegar Syndrome released this beautiful 4K Blu-ray set last May. It has two different versions of the film, two full-length documentaries, and a bunch more. But is the movie worth all of this, you ask? Yes. It's probably the greatest achievement in cinema. I don't really want to do a full review here because I think this movie should be an experience. That being said, I'll only have a few minor spoilers. The stars of our film are a band called Dragon Sound, and despite the title, the film takes place in Orlando, not Miami. The connection to Miami is that a drug lord located in Miami who also runs a gang of ninjas wants to take out the members of Dragon Sound because they're getting in the way of his drug trade. Did I mention that every member of the band just so happens to be a black belt in Taekwondo? We could write another Taekwondo song, and after Tom does one of his guitar solos, we could all break boards. Jack could do a drum solo. This brings us back to YK Kim. He was an insanely popular Taekwondo practitioner in Orlando at the time. In fact, most of the stars of the film were his students in real life. On top of that, he was so popular in Orlando that the city let him film literally wherever he wanted without any sort of permit. The story of the production of this movie is just as ridiculous as the movie itself. Right. Wherever we go, we visit the local Taekwondo schools, we promote peace and goodwill. I think we could take a little time out for dinner while we're trying to save the world. Okay, so let's get to the music. Not only is this my favorite movie, but it also features my favorite soundtrack. And you know how most movies just show clips of the band playing songs? Not this one. You get the entire thing. The music is so good that Rodney, Homeless Guy, and I have started a cover band that only plays Miami Connection songs. We call ourselves Dragon Sight. <laughs> I'm just not, I am not getting enough energy from your Taekwons. All right, I need you to step it up. 
This is serious. We're playing at the... You know what, Ian? Why don't you go to hell? If you don't like my chance, have fun finding a new accordion player. Okay, so our group of rock and roll taekwondo vigilantes sing about world peace, but have no problem killing a bunch of ninjas in the streets. It's kind of like Peacemaker from the Suicide Squad. I cherish peace with all my heart. I don't care how many men, women, and children I need to kill to get it. But that movie understands how ironic that idea is. The makers of Miami Connection really seem to think that the way to peace is to murder anyone who isn't peaceful. But I guess the United States government feels the same. <laughs> then there are a couple extremely random and hilarious side plots. First, everyone in the band is just in college. It has nothing to do with anything, and there are just scenes here and there of them randomly studying. Next, there's this moment when one of the members of the band is hiding a letter behind his back. It's my father. What? This is your real father? Yes, it is. Are you sure? I didn't know you had a father. I thought we are all orphans. Yeah, only orphans are allowed in this band. Rodney, what's that? It's, a, it's nothing. Is that a Dr. Pepper? A, no. But no. I thought we only drink Mountain Dew in this band. I mean, I just thought Ron, maybe. You, no, I think we're going to have to ask you to leave. All right, enough. You guys are always fighting in this band. I'm so sick of it. I need to focus on college. I quit. Reginald, come on. We're all in college, and we all make it work. Great job, Ian. Now where are we gonna find a new bass player? Would you relax? I doubt anyone even knew he was there. But I knew one day when I grew up I'd find him. Whether he was dead or alive. I lost my father too. Rodney Wienermeyer Dickerson II was swept away in the storm of 93. Anyways, said character eventually learns that his dad is alive. My father! My father! I found my father! Oh my god! And when he meets his dad, it's clearly a person younger than him with makeup on. So yeah, I just wanted to share a few fun things from this movie without giving much away. Other highlights include a bearded drug dealer named Jeff, who was played by a real-life federal prosecutor. Because of Jeff, too. He's in there every night. This damn gang selling that stupid cocaine. And a restaurant owner who also knows Taekwondo and also has no qualms about killing people in the streets. <laughs> Basically, the message of this film is that either you know Taekwondo or you're a loser. <laughs> Alright everybody, as you know, uh, Rodney believes that his father died in a flood a few years back, but that's actually not true and we found his dad. So this is going to be in Ian's ideas first. We're going to reunite father and son. Hey Rodney. What? Have we got a surprise for you. Come on out, dad. My father. I'm proud of you, son. My father. I'm proud of you. 